Welcome back to Chamber Exchange. We want to thank our sponsor who made this TV show happen, Bank Hometown. I'm thrilled to have with us uh, Jill LeBeau, who's the Chief Human Resources Officer from Fallon Health. Jill, I think you've been on the show at some point before, but so welcome back. Oh, thank you, Tim. Uh, well, Fallon, uh, Fallon Health, uh, an anchor in this community in a variety of different ways, not only a major employer in Worcester and in central Massachusetts, but a major a component of our healthcare sector, uh, making a difference for families and companies and individuals. Um, maybe uh, I want to jump right in. Maybe we could talk a little bit, you know, I'll let you talk a little bit about Fallon and then your involvement with a new initiative uh, that the Chamber is helping lead together with the City of Worcester and uh, the, uh, uh, I'm blanking on one of our institutions and partners, which I United shouldn't. Way. United Way of Central Massachusetts. Tim Garvin's going to kill me. Um, <laughs> so United Way of Central Mass, the Chamber, and the City of Worcester on the Worcester Green Corps initiative, and, and Fallon sponsoring it. Yes. So, you know, Fallon is thrilled to be part of this new effort. You know, it aligns with Fallon Health's mission and its commitment to the community. Um, so we're thrilled to recently have signed on as a supporting sponsor for the Green Corps initiative. You know, Fallon began in 1977. And you know, downtown has been the organization's home for years. And we think this is a great way to invest in the city as well in the youth that will be supporting and benefiting from the program. Yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's important. I mean, certainly as we talk about the economic development and the investment that's taking place in the city, we wanna make sure we have a you know, clean city engaging in beautification. But the big part of this program, and I know this is one of the reasons that, you know, and, and when we designed you know, the Worcester Green Corps together, uh, with the city of Worcester and United Way of Central Mass, it, it's it's about also providing uh, pathways, educational and career pathways in the environmental and green space. Uh, and we know how making sure being engaging in best practices and being smart about our environment directly impact people's health, uh, particularly in some of our urban areas. And so if we can clean up brown field, field sites or having future licensed site professionals come out of this program and uh, people who are working in our city and water uh, departments, uh, scientists and researchers, we create a healthier environment, better healthier outcomes, and that's important to Fallon. Yeah, absolutely. The healthier outcomes, as well as the focus on youth and initiatives that help our youth. You know, I'm dressed like this, Tim. I usually dress a little more professionally, um, especially for an interview, but I spent the morning today with other members of Fallon's executive team and then employees throughout the organization that chose to volunteer at the Ron Burton Training Village in Hufferston. And I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they have a program that does help challenged youth. So again, right in line with Fallon Health's mission. And, you know, we need to make sure that, you know, all of our young people, some are faced with real challenges at an early age and this trauma and this impact. Uh, but uh, to the extent that we can provide the supports uh, and assistance and healthcare mm -hmm. that they need, uh, you know, there's ways for them to overcome some of those challenges and then uh, be meaningfully engaged and involved in the community through employment and in a variety of other ways. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and then, you know, in that, in that regard, uh, you know, with the shirt that you're wearing too, also I think speaks to you know, Fallon's commitment to issues around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And clearly, since the murder of George Floyd and the disparities that uh, really magnified themselves during the course of the COVID-19 crisis, you know, the conversation around diversity and equity and inclusion has grown, and that's appropriate. But it's something that you've been involved in, Fallon Health has been involved in for a long time. Right. You know, since its inception, Fallon Health has been committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. But I think it does seem particularly relevant to talk about that commitment today. So I'm glad you brought it up. Because, you know, the deep impact of COVID-19, you know, the impact it's had on communities of color and the health inequities that it's laid bare brings even more focus here at Fallon Health on the kind of work we need to do with our members and our communities. Tomorrow is also the upcoming celebration of Juneteenth. And this is uh, Pride Month. Um, being June. So, you know, we've been doing quite a bit, like I said, from the start, but several years ago, our membership started to become increasingly diverse, and it will continue to do so as Fallon Health focuses more on government programs and helping challenge individuals achieve positive health outcomes. You know, so to support our diverse membership, our hiring has been increasingly diverse. So what's come with that is 
a real push and focused effort on educating our workforce on how to work with people of different cultures, internally working with each other, and then especially to support our members. So several years ago, Human Resources in partnership with a group of employees created a Council for Cultural Competence. And while Human Resources and one of my colleagues here, Chris Cassidy, we sponsor it, it's really employee led and run. They put the ideas together, the initiatives, and they do the work. And we've seen great traction. I mean, we have events all the time. Um, several of council members participated in the volunteering today. We had a speaker yesterday that focused on LGBTQ issues and really reaching a deeper understanding about that community. Um, and we do read, watch, and listen events. We have celebrations. So that's the council. We've also formed a health equity work group. And so that's another cross-functional team partnering very much with the clinical group. But that was established to identify and prioritize opportunities for us at Fallon um, to address healthcare disparities among our organization's membership. And, and that kind of you know, focus is, is gonna be important as again, we talked about how COVID-19 has magnified these disparities but Fallon has really developed a level of expertise working with many of the governmental programs, both at the state and federal level um, to number one, maximize you know, their efficiency in terms of better outcomes and results for the individuals and families that are utilizing these programs. But in doing so are good stewards of public dollars that help fund you know, some of these programs. And you know, we've learned that when you can bring that coordinated care approach to oftentimes populations that come from more challenging health backgrounds or may have uh, multiple kind of medical issues, uh, you know, there's an expertise to that, there's an art to that. And that's what Fallon's looking to take to the next level as it moves out of the commercial commercial space into, you know, working on, on these government programs which require that level of expertise. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we don't just hire or look for healthcare workers. We look for healthcare workers that have a passion and experience with this population. Um, you know, several of our programs actually address social determinants of health, right? And that makes a big difference in terms of, you know, changing healthcare inequities and making things, making a positive difference. One of my favorite stories is an award that was given several years ago to one of our employees. He has a role that's called a navigator. So he helps coordinate that care. He's not, he doesn't have a clinical licensure, right? But he had experience here at Fallon and other programs and a real passion for the work. It was one hot summer and he had a member he was working with whom he knew didn't have an air conditioner. So this employee who's probably in his early thirties found an air conditioner. Um, I don't know if he paid with it for, with his own money or not. And he spent Saturday installing it at the member's home um, on his own time, right? And so we have countless stories like that, that just, you know, really, it just shows the positive difference that Fallon Health is making through the work of its committed employees. Yeah. Well, that passion and then cultural competencies are so important as our, our community and country becomes more diverse. So uh, right. good stuff. Well, we, you know, we want to again, thank Fallon again for their support of, of this new Worcester Green Corps initiative of, of the Chamber of the City and United Way of Central Mass and having a company like Fallon with its roots uh, and, uh, you know, reputation behind this early is not only going to be great outcomes for our kids, but you know, a healthier, cleaner, and greener uh, Worcester as well. And uh, thank you for what you do in the healthcare space and, and uh, employing people here as well. Sure. For our economy. All right. Well, thank you, Tim. We appreciate the partnership with the Chamber as well. All right. Well, Jill LeBeau, Chief Human Resources Officer for Fallon Health. Stay with us. We're going to come back uh, to talk with Mike Welch from Unimay. Since 1889, Bank Hometown has stepped up to bat for our neighbors. In the past five years, we've donated $1.3 million to local organizations that help enrich lives and bring people together. And we're not stopping there. We're always looking to tackle the challenges of today and fuel the leaders of tomorrow. No matter how life changes over the years, we'll continue to show up for our neighbors, for our communities, and for you. Bank Hometown. Unlock your potential.